Here I am, my American brothers and sisters. Morpheus is back to empower you a little bit more. One video at a time, one red pill at a time, one segment at a time, one understanding at a time. As we continue to go, as I always say, my job is to empower you so video after video, learning after learning, stage after stage, my place is to cleanse you from your manipulation and to show you the right path or for some people maybe a possible different path of understanding. So the more you learn, the more you have an optimistic mindset the more you begin the branch. What I want to talk about right now is a very vital subject that might enthuse you. Okay? And that is where we are building our kingdoms. Now, I talk about multiple subjects about religion, about your internal strength, about the environment, about uh, gender, and comprehensions of our our set indoctrination subjects but this is one of the ones that are is a lot more sticky this is one of, this is a subject that a lot of people that don't want to talk about who indeed live in the la la land as if they're in disneyland first of all i don't start off by saying that we are not immortal people even though we can be through memory even though we are immortal through the memory of our people who have been around us or who we have inspired or affected. But what I want to tell you today is where we are building up our idea of life in and upon. And let's look at it on the basis of our money, our, our physical corporeal existence here on planet Earth. Is that we are building a, you could say, life for ourselves but what you don't comprehend is is life has a <laughs> it has many definitions based on your perception and vision of yourself and reality but what I have understood and overstood and have pretty much advised and has spoken to many people about which is why I'm producing this video here because I've had at least 50 requests already talking about life and death because people have questions and I'm here to empower you and since I'm always been considered as Morpheus that means you are asking for a red pill and I'm going to give you what you ask for because I am here to deliver you understand so the thing is about life and death it's a perception of what you think your life is Okay, but within the parameters and the confines of the definitions of life, where we usually establish our concept of life is in our environment where we buy houses, we have children, we try to build up a real estate, we begin to, uh, for some people, think of the white picket fence and the house on the hill and being retired and and having the ability to drive whatever motorcycles you want, the Harley Davidsons and you know, big trucks on big round wheels or nice flashy Cadillacs or whatever that you desire, whatever floats your boat, whatever you think that brings you happiness. Most times when a children when a child is at school, they want to become a nurse or a doctor or somebody who's gonna be able to bring in an immense amount of money per year so they can provide themselves with what they think is a simulation of what right life really is but I'm here to tell you that those things are not substantial to be considered as your life they are to support your life they are not what your life is if you ever hear this expression make a life for yourself or you don't have a life or you know I'm gonna I'm gonna build a I'm gonna build a life for myself and my family as what they would say all the time you can build all that all you want to that's not what life is okay that's an image 
that's nothing but a fabrication okay of a possibility that does not mean that you are living your life because a lot of people who make that type of money a lot of people who who decided to buy a mansion of a house that them and maybe their wife or maybe two other kids live in but this house is as big as you know I don't know how many acres <laughs> a five bedroom six bedroom and you you know you you lose yourself in the place because it's so massive it's so large and a you know 50 car garage I know that's a little outlandish but believe me there are some people who really have large garages that are just that similar and you feel like you need to have all this space you feel like you got to have all these acres you got to have all this 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 vanity as we discussed before in my previous video that vanity is the devil of this world's ultimate tool to manipulate your mind because vanity does not feed your soul vanity is the tangible things vanity is what we wear it doesn't mean anything to your spirit and your soul but yet it does listen it is to help it can help your soul and your spirit when your body is warm when your mind is clear when you are doing right towards other people then yes your soul can be enlightened or your mind can be at ease when you're sitting down in your lounge chair and you're reading a nice book hopefully you'll be reading my book okay so there's a relaxation to it while you're sitting there and you're reading my book and you're drinking on some tea and you're just thinking about the world and you just digesting information okay so it brings calm to you to be in your atmosphere of ownership of whatever that might be there's nothing wrong with that but the problem here that we have in America is called gluttony that means we go above and beyond and think we have to have everything in order to compen listen in order to compensate what we don't have inside here usually sometimes when you have a in psychology usually we have a person who really wants to buy a flashy car and they they they, they color painted a certain type of way are they they feel as if their status uh, is a, a description of who they really are you know if they live a life where they are concerned about image about opinion or about what other people think about them that means they're not confident in the soul in which they are so they, they, they end up doing is living a lavish lifestyle what they end up doing is telling you what kind of cars they drive or what type of house they live in and not only that it's almost like this like a, a lady said this a long time ago and usually I don't I don't really digest most if not everything what women talk about because I go by a woman's actions not by her words because most times they go like this but their actions is totally different okay but she made sense when she says that she said there was this big truck on large wheels right and it was color I think it was a Chevy or something like that Chevy Silverado it was uplifted and she said she said that guy is trying to compensate for something that he doesn't have and I start to think about it like okay that kind of makes sense and I comprehend this and I understand how some people try to make up for what they don't have within themselves like some guys who are considered to be tough you know but yet they got to compensate for it by walking around and you know by talking big and you know by you know loud motorcycles or big beefy trucks but yet when you talk to them they're just as limp as a noodle you know it's like you know they they are part of the feminist movement you know they're blue pill okay those type of guys they're still chasing after women and and most and a lot of guys too it's not all of them I'm just saying general factor a lot of them they do that because they want to attract attention and they want to attract the attention mainly from the opposite sex the woman okay so they realize that that's what she likes so she go he goes after that because that's what attracts her to him and then you know you have the you have the uh, you have the circus or <laughs> what uh what Tom like is used to say on to the races which is kind of funny but anyway that is just a simple example it's not for every general factor but it's an idea of where I'm going with this or well, we have a lack of self we have a lack of internal concentration of our own general factions and yet we have to compensate it for something that's overblown 
But the point of the matter here is this. We invest in those things as if it is life. It's not life. Because when you leave this world, you can't take it with you. It's always better to live simple. Live within the confines of being frugal with your money. Knowing how to spend your money properly. Knowing how to invest properly in things that make sense. In things that actually generate revenue. In things that is simple that's not overdone things that you can actually use in your lifetime because a lot of those people who have the 100,000 acres or whatever this big mansion is most times they don't because they have worked hard for it and because they are generating a certain revenue that consistently needs their attention they're always in the office they always have to uh, well I guess like myself take calls like you just saw but trust me I don't have a mansion okay and uh, I always keep it uncut and simple. It would be nice if I had a nice, really large, decent house that I can, you know, uh, put my several cars into the garage and be able to have a, you know, a patio that I could just look out and say, okay, this is my land. And yeah, that would be nice. But for me personally, I would not be concerned about having a mansion. It's just me. So I would not be concerned about having a house with five or six different rooms in it you know and I'm not going to be in any room if anything I will occupy each room with whatever activity that appeases me so every room will be used every room will be occupied with something like a gym or something like that that I could I could use our guest room for other people who might uh, need counsel and help so I can sit up here and say that but for example as I'm so busy and as you see taking calls and and and, and giving advice and helping other people imagine if I were to do that for a full-time job and imagine and that's the only reason of how I can actually substantiate my foundation of my matches and my houses okay and I have to do it let's just say 10 hours out of the day sometimes even 12 and stay later as a CEO or as a manager as a boss whereas I'm only home only several hours out of the day or maybe I only have Saturday and Sunday to enjoy my time at home that I have spent you know way over you know nine hundred eight hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars or so I've seen a house that costs that much and that's a lot of money you know that's a lot of money for people who don't have that type of uh, clout but most times it's not occupied so you have all this land you have all this this great prosperity but you are not there so you'll wonder what they're investing in they're only invested in again the vanity of their life they're not investing in their life it's the vanity of their life but it's not their life itself it's just the concept of it so it becomes empty so you you automatically see through research and and watching other famous people and it's not to talk about them that's fine if you want a big house go for it all the money that y'all spend with the, the three thousand five well not three thousand the three million five million twenty million a year and things like that buying fancy cars buying these huge establishments and this this nice big house on the hill that that overlooks the city you know and again it's not it has nothing to do with the fact that I don't have it that I'm hating on you as what people say or that I'm jealous no as a matter of fact I applaud you you know you made it good job it's nice I would like to have one of my own okay good you know but the reality of it is when you look at the spiritual aspiration and the internal aspiration it's more or less you trying to build your kingdom here on earth and there's nothing wrong with building your kingdom on earth but let's be realistic that most of these people they're not interested you're not interested in anything that's higher than what you are building here as if you're going to be here for all eternity as if you're going to live forever most times when you see a famous actor or a famous person who makes you know an immense amount of money per year during their career and they decide to put a house up for sale the house costs more than than 12 blocks put together in an urban city or <laughs> You know, it, it may cost the block of a New York City somewhere of that vicinity and parameter, you know, and you would wonder why would you need that much? 
you know, within their confines of how they choose to use their money is their business. But realistically, you're looking at two parts of yourself because you're not going to be here forever. One day, one day your name's going to be in the obituary. You know, one day you're going to have to say goodbye to the world. So living that life where you are investing your money and your time into vanity, it takes away from yourself. It takes away from investing in you. I'm not saying that's not what you're doing. Whatever you decide to do is your own aspirations because I'm not in everyone's home. This is a general factor based on my requests that have been sent into me by my emails and people who need direction. The problem is here in America, we live beyond our means. We like things that are real big. You know, like these little bitty girls that drive these huge SUVs that they can't drive, like this big Suburban that most times they, they're driving over the curve, they're bumping into people. You know, the Suburban that costs more than their apartment complex you know and it's just for flash but that's investing into vanity that takes away from your spirit self but when you talk to these people they don't know anything about what you and I talk about they don't know about your level of and they don't know about your subjects they don't know about bringing themselves up higher beyond the vanity the only thing they care about is going home uh, sipping on a, a bottle of champagne and probably going to sleep to get up in the morning to do the same thing over and over again whereas you my dear american people who are interested in empowerment you're always studying you're always thinking about doing something to invest here because your soul is now but your soul is also going to be tomorrow your flesh your corporeal flesh is only now it's not going to be tomorrow. So why would you invest in something that's not going to be there tomorrow? So it will be better for the common individual to think about what's inside. Like I know there's some people who say that if they was rich and they get some money that they wouldn't buy a whole lot of cars. They wouldn't be interested in big houses and they wouldn't, they would not, um, you know, buy expensive clothing and, and furs and wherever else that you could get with your money. But when they do, what's the first thing that they do? That's the first thing they do. They go and buy a Lamborghini. They go get a Bugatti. You know, um, Koenigsegg. I think that's what you call the car. I don't want to say the pronunciation wrong. The Koenigseggs. Very decent cars. Um, very expensive, though. But that's the first thing that they go get. Or the woman will go get a big house. And I've seen it. Y'all have seen it. Through your research, through... Uh, popular people just watch what they have and it's just why you know I understand that you could do it that's fine if you got the money to do it you got the money to do it. it's like you go to a grocery store and uh, instead of buying one of those knockoff brand or products or something like that you got the money to buy the genuine article something that's good I mean it's fine you can do it but that lifestyle is costly at the same time because what are you actually investing in? Because most of these people are showing you what they are really all about. Moderation is a very important thing. Living simply also shows the, the, the modesty of the person and what their true direction is, what their, their true, what their true potential was. For example, I don't make a lot of money. I'm, I'm just making it day to day. Okay. And I sort of happened to come across a motorcycle that was two grand. Really nice motorcycle. It had a nice paint job on it, had nice chrome on it. It almost looked like it cost like thirty something thousand dollars, but nobody knew that I brought it for two thousand dollars, okay? But I would always hide it because I knew that it was catching attention. A lot of people were like, Oh, this is so nice and oh I'm and then the first thing that they'll start thinking is how much money do you make a year? Are, are you rich or or how did you do that or uh, uh, you are you are comprehending the women who are always about you know smelling money you know because they want to take from us guys instead of providing for us guys they always got their hands out you know like oh can I ride in back of your bike and oh you know just is it fast you know can I ride with you and this and I purposely hid it out of the way because first of all I don't want to be a liar to myself and think that I have something and I don't or try to use that as a persona of myself 
That's not to say that that I need praise for being modest. Everybody has their own idea why. The only reason why I drove it every now is because I just like to hit the breeze. I just like to enjoy myself. I just like to, you know, it's a warm summer day. I want to feel the breeze on my face and just breathe and all that. But little bitty small things like that, I begin to learn. And this is some of the incidences that have occurred between the 12 year period of me writing my book that you should be familiar with by now. Um, of learning and by experience and by studying and by going to the libraries of seeing that people have a twisted sense of their realities you know because the to invest in such vanity it does nothing for the inner soul and so I had to move that out of the way because I wanted people to know the real me I wanted people to have a face-to-face -face conversation and be as exact as they are because I realized they were only there because they saw the motorcycle they're only there because of what I was producing. They're only there because of the visual aspirations of it. But I did not want my focus point to be on that. But in reverse with a lot of other people who build their life up that way, most times it's true that that's what they want you to see of them. They want you to see that they are glamorous. They want you to think, even on Facebook, people will tell you that, oh, they got a big house and they show... Uh, some glass mirrors and they try to show you that they're going to Florida somewhere and they got a picture of the beach behind them or they got a picture of something going on for them and they want you to think that they're happy and oh you know here you know look at me they're really not most of them they're really not they're just trying to portray a life that they really do not have and that's being a liar that's being a liar and a deceiver instead of being truthful to yourself you see and that too is another aspiration of this conversation here but the problem here in America again getting back to the major subject here so you can really get the point of what I'm saying instead of beating around the bush is this we are investing in things that have nothing to do with our inner man okay we are investing in the, the with these large houses these expensive cars these this lifestyle that's a life style it's not life itself your life sadly to say is not going to be here forever you're not an eternal species you're going to have to check out sometime and pass on but before you do that your task why you are breathing now why we are here is not to let the pastor tell us who we are and what we are to do with our life why you are here your life is not to try to impress other people's lives. Why we are here, your life, your goal, your mission, while you are breathing, your mission is not to try to figure out who everybody else is or to try to invest even in your own vanities to mistake the life that you are supposed to have. Because it's just like the investment in your stock market, it's like the investment in your portfolio, the investment in yourself, in your kid's future, trust fund, savings account. You have, I'm going to always tell you this and just get used to it as Morpheus, I'm about your empowerment and I know that this, the soul source of yourself is what's within yourself. You got a soul and you have your flesh, you have heaven and you have you, you have eternal life and you got this thing here. Okay, what happens is when you invest in vanity, you work in 12 hours out of the day, you don't give yourself time to breathe, you don't read my book, <laughs> you, know, you or you don't read a book, okay, I'm not biased, there's plenty of information out there, you don't, sorry for the light, this is kind of sunny out here, I know it's been blinging every now and then, I'm not trying to blind you, and if I have to redo the video, I will, oh, there we go again, oh my god, okay. Sorry about that. See, I'm not perfect. And I'm okay with that. I'm not perfect. I'm okay. See, I keep very everything very simple. I'm down to earth. I'm a simple person just like you. But it's like this. When you invest in something, it grows. It grows. Okay? So, when you invest in your soul, in your spirit, it begins to grow. So, since you know you're not going to be here forever, since you know that you have a soul, since you know that you believe in life and you want that life to come to you, you have to invest in that so it can grow. So therefore you can benefit the fruits of your soul's labor when it's time for you to pass on or when it's time for you to advance to the next chapter 
of your life or advance to the next paradigm of your soul's existence what happens is if you don't invest in it your soul is this small but your flesh is this big which is again the devil's greatest trick is vanity you invested in something that's going to pass away it don't mean nothing that big house don't mean nothing to your soul those fancy cars don't mean nothing to your souls those bugattis don't mean nothing to your soul those harley davises ain't going to save your soul and for some people those chicks ain't going to save your soul it's not going to do you any good to build up all this repertoire physically because you want people to remember you by your vanity why not have people remember you by what you contribute to the world based on empowerment or your soul or for the advancement of the human race or just for America itself as we know that is what your task is and my task and why I'm talking as I'm talking is because of you all that stuff is gonna it's gonna cinder block away and what point would that be for us to invest in our future here as physical humans and we prepare for our you know our colleges for our students for our kids for whatever that's going to happen 10 years from now or two years from now for some of us our daily okay but yet we don't do that for who we are on the inside sometimes we got to stop and breathe just stop that you don't have to chase money money is listen money is not your life it is a supporting substance that helps you to maintain your physical body that's what money is it's not your life money is not the root of all evil what is within you is the root of all evil it's what you do with it it's like you have a weapon in your hand and all you got to do is push the button and everything blows up right it's not the button that pushes itself or compresses itself it's you that can press the button most times we don't study ourselves and we're not preparing ourselves and our children and other people to comprehend that self-control self-love or even you can even go there the heavens is not some spaceship far away heaven is how you adapt to it right here it's your perception of reality you understand so you can have as much money as you want it's not about how much money you have it's what you are doing with your money I know the happiest people who don't have a lot of money who are working from day to day you know who are struggling to even pay their car notes on an everyday basis but they they learn how to put a smile on their face you know they learn how to invest in their soul and sadly enough there are some religious people that think that that's the way life is supposed to be and realistically is not I'm not saying that you should be comfortable being a a lower producing species no our productive species that's not what I'm saying you should rise up and try to do better but you got to realize you're not chasing life you're just chasing substance your life is when you came into existence when you were butt naked you are the only thing that's the most valuable thing in existence not what you chase because that Harley Davidson is not going to raise you up from the dead it's not going to it's going to stay in the scrapyard and that's where it's going to be because that's where it have come from anyway the, the recycle bin but your soul cannot be recycled listen what you do for other people cannot be recycled it can be what you call it, it can be simulated it can be assimilated it can be shared it can be it can evolve to something even better like we're still talking about Einstein today Einstein have left us so many years ago but still people are still talking about Einstein you know we're still talking about George Washington we're still talking about all those other great people because what they have did at that time was assimilated it was spread out nobody care about what they owned I'm pretty sure Einstein probably had you know crazy laboratories or maybe he made something maybe he did some maybe he had something like maybe a wristwatch that was probably worth in their time maybe a hundred bucks which to us might be a hundred thousand dollars but we're not talking about his rich watches we're talking about what he produced for the society intellectually 
but imagine that being your soul you're producing that for your soul now yeah do for other people that's number one we got to start doing that here in america that's why we are powered down when you start powering up by doing for other people doing for other people means we're going to start doing for ourselves for me to do for you i'm doing for me because i care about you i'm caring about myself there's a reciprocated factor so when you are investing that way there is a decent rebuttal but investing in a million dollar mansion just to cover up your physical body what does that mean what would that do for you there's a lot of people who have passed away in their mansion that mansion is not it can be your coffin but most likely they're going to put you in a little bitty coffin living that lifestyle to chase money are being deceived to try to chase some type of financial stability that's not soul stability that's your physical stability everybody wants nice things you can have nice things everybody wants to travel the world and you know they want to win the lottery they want to be successful that's possible but you are being lied to by the devil's deception and the devil has many concepts as you continue to read my book I'm gonna tell you in detail within that what I mean by it but I have to say that because most people talk about nothing but God and devil as if it's that's just it without a wider way of a comprehension but anyway where it's a dangling carrot so all your life you're chasing this carrot listen you're chasing this carrot like a rabbit and you're just chasing it and you're thinking that it's your life you're thinking that it's money you're thinking that it's everything that this world has to offer and what you're living leaving behind is what real life means what it really means so you end up forgetting yourself if you live simple and modest your soul will begin to see what life is really all about the simple things like nature or go to a museum go for a little nice walk and just allow yourself to breathe in what is really non-tangible which is nature we have a problem listen and this is also in my book we have a problem with destroying nature and to make it what we want it to be by this manipulated amalgamated catastrophe this Frankenstein in society and we wonder why we can't feel the higher essences of God we wonder why our instincts is this low because we put our human hands on nature and we poisoned it and now we turn it around and want to do some landscaping and you know add some trees over here God didn't make that man did and you're enjoying man's creation you're like wow that's that looks nice over there that's a really wonderful park that's really nice they really did some good renovation over there you know you're enjoying that creation but that's a creation at a level that's right here but there was a nature before that that was greater than that that was untouched there's nothing like something that is pure virgin and untouched there's nothing like looking deep in I don't know I haven't been to the Grand Canyon but I can imagine if it's as it is by rumor it's nothing so great as to be allowed it to be it's like don't touch it just let it be and it's a, it has its own beauty and it's priceless just like love is priceless that's right you can't buy love it's a it is an essence and an energy and an energy tethering from you and your higher your higher God your creator right it's priceless but people fight for it people have searched for it for you people talk about it and they amalgamate it listen based on their own understanding and when you try to gravitate it from your own understanding most times you bring it down to only your level of intelligence or your own level of perception but if you accept the thing as it is within the confines of your learning and your higher comprehension instead of just trying to bring it down but you allow it to change you not you changing it then you begin to realize just how important it really is that it's it you can't you can't touch it but it becomes priceless because everybody a lot of people live and die for that you know a lot of people have died from being in love or not in love love has been the most love has been the most crucial assassin that we have in existence why is that because it does exist and it is important it's just that the people who evolve themselves around the concept of what they thought it was 
They brought love down to their level and manipulated it and fed it to you and you got sick and you died from it because a human hand touched it. We don't want to try to teach the right way. We want to try to tell people what we think. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm not trying to teach you a different way of life. I'm trying to open up your mind so you can have a broader understanding. So whatever that you're going through, you might have two stacks of gold. My idea is to give you five stacks of gold so that way you can use this as an option to say, okay, I got something to think about. Because when you really think about love from its highest perspective, it is a pure energy that does not need to be tainted. We taint it because we start bringing mess into our relationship. We start not trusting the person when we first meet them. Most time when we first meet somebody, we judge them before they even get a chance to tell us who we are. Just because they're cute, you think they're cute on the inside. You know, just because they look like a man, you think they're they're manly on the inside. They're just as sensitive as any, you know, some Pillsbury Doughboy. You know, it's just like, instead of just allowing it to be what it is, just sit back and just let it evolve on its own. Then you have a, there's nothing, it's like this. When you are in, in love with somebody in a relationship, and you first meet them, it's all, it feels good. It's saucy, right? It's like, oh, it's just news. Like, oh, this feels so good. You're in love with that person. You want to know why it begins to go downhill? Because you begin to realize sometimes they're not lovable or they're not producing the same energy of love as you are. So you become unbalanced. Love, listen, love wants love in return. What that means is love is a mirror. So when you are projecting it some kind of way, okay, it's looking for itself. What happens is when you are able to mirror, it bounces back off of that person and it comes back to you. But it has to come back the same way that you project it. We get disappointed when we project that love and it comes back differently, lower, or manipulated, or not the same way because the soul's not stupid. Our mind may be stupid. Our perception up here, based on what we have learned in our indoctrination caps, okay, may be down here. But the mind of your creator and the all maker of the universe, okay, it doesn't need your human books to comprehend the intelligence of your internal soul. So when you love somebody, and it's even if it comes back that same way, you can pick up internally that wait a minute something's wrong this doesn't taste right like wait a minute are you cheating on me or what do you do? yeah most times it's because something's wrong with the reciprocating factor okay it's just like a computer to a fax machine or something like that you send out the signal and whatever's being sent back it can be distorted so you get this vision of a paper that comes out and it's, it's wrinkly or something like it's not right the reason is it's because everybody has their own perception. So you can meet some you can meet somebody who's at that same frequency. And y'all just boom, y'all match. But you want to know what's keeping us from doing that, my dear American brothers and sisters? Movements. The society's norms, the society's acceptance of the amalgamated value that we have here in America. Our low expectation, our low teaching, we allow our, our, our children and ourselves to be in environments that are based on confusion. Just like what I talk about with religion. Religion being that middle person. You are supposed to be here as Adam and here's Eve. Y'all supposed to come together and bang, right? But what happens is, because people make money off of our ignorance, I'm always telling you this, because the society, the, the structures, the indoctrinations make money off of you being powered down. Before you come in contact with love being reflected with love, right being right, honest being honest, true being true, they have to put a roadblock in between. So then y'all end up bumping into that brick wall and you don't notice that is there. So you looking for a precipitating factor but you can't yes we do have individual responsibility in the matter with that particular person but most times it's not their fault it's because they've been misled they have a lack of information they don't study 
and the reality of it is a lot of these videos that you listen to you'll be surprised that there are billions of people who don't know anything about most of the videos that you look at you will ask them oh do you know about this person or have you heard about this oh do you have you heard about this topic they'll be like no because they're not interested in that because those are the usual people who's just they're just functioning along it's like a zombie without thinking they just they just go along you know what zombies do they eat brains right that that old that old mythical scary stuff they eat brains right because they don't think for themselves they need somebody to think for them like people in a church no pun to y'all it's just real it's that you're needing somebody to think for you you need somebody to to tell you what to do so you're holding on to your daddy's hand because you can't stand up on your own two feet you see what I mean so therefore you don't have an awareness of yourself when you are strong when you are and it's like this God wants you to, your God wants you to be strong enough to let go of the hand and say I got a daddy I can walk on my own now. I can I can go to the bathroom on my own or I can do this on my no I can do this on my own I know how to clean myself I know how to do this but we're still holding on so we're still lost that why we're that's why we're not evolving that's why we are investing in things that doesn't have anything to do with this have nothing to do with your mentality we don't even read as much books as we used to a lot of times we just go click on something on Google and we're okay really you know that I mean a lot of times we I mean sometimes the magazines that are on a shelf in the store they stay there for months because we just so lax of days ago and so I want to chase the carrot I want to match it I want to have a, a, a 12 car garage well, you don't give yourself time to invest in this, then you pass away. And what did you build? What did you build for your your kids besides some financial structure where they're going to be just like you, a walking automaton, not knowing anything because, oh, I just want to be financially stable and I just want to make money. Oh, it was all about being a million. And then, I mean, what? But that's fine. If that's what you want to do, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's your choice. So to answer my, my 50 fans, since you want to ask me about what I think about life and death, this should give you a little bit more detail about this perspective. Life and death is a perception of what you choose to do with it, with it now, because the evidence of life is around you. Just because you're alive doesn't mean that you're living. There are a lot of people who exist. Listen, there's a lot of people who exist, but they're not alive why is that because they don't know what their life is they're busy wanting other people to give them the definition of their life give yourself the definition of a life you here to put your own signature in the bottom line and say yep this is what I like that's mine so if your life is the matching have at it but just remember whatever you invest in that just identifies what you really all about you know, I'm more concerned about what's on the inside. And the reason why America is going down the toilet is because we are chasing those carrots. We are working two or three jobs a day, a year. We are needing and wanting more money. The economy is stressing us out. They keep increasing the prices, but yet we're getting paid less. So all that's doing is is forcing us to stay in the boundary of slavery to a system that don't want to let us go and so we feel like oh we need to keep chasing money because without money I can't live I can't live without money no you can live without money it's just that your body your focus your your lifestyle to provide for yourself will be kind of difficult but at the end of the day you still got your soul you still have your flesh you still only have you so when we live and we we focus on existing not live focus on existing by trying to put a coat on this vicarious flesh that's not made to be forever and that's the only thing that we're existing for is to put a coat on our back then you live in a life of vanity you're lying to yourself when you need to be real and say okay I'm not gonna be here forever there's no need to be having that I don't need all that somebody excuse me someone else can have that or let's let's just do something with let's do be more productive with all this I don't need that you know 86 billion dollar a year contract I'll, I'll do with that like what like no 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 
No, you give me $80 billion a year, trust me, my children of America, they're going to be raised up. I'm going to do something for my people. And I'm not talking about my people's as culturally. I'm talking about people of America as a whole because we are in a crapshoot. And instead of some of us who just like to talk, you know, I'd rather walk it and start doing things because that's the only thing that's going to empower America and bring them back to life. I don't need $86 billion a year just to funk, just to put a coat on my back. No, just give me enough to be good, have my little nice house. You know, I'm okay. You know, two, three bedroom, a little patio. So I'm good. Somewhere I can keep writing my books. I can keep studying so I can keep empowering y'all because we are at a downfall to think that we got to live a lavish lifestyle that has nothing to do with this. And then therefore, our legacy that we're leaving behind for our kids, they start doing the same thing. Oh, I'm just going to do the same thing. We're creating zombies from a zombie society. We need to wake up and realize there's two sides of you. There's you and there's the real you, which is your soul. And the problem is here in America, we're losing our soul. Because we're, listen, if you think I'm a liar, because we're losing our value. Because we're losing our instincts. Because we're losing are good common sense there's such thing as common sense that doesn't mean that it's good because it's common you know there's a lot of things that's being pushed poison into the environment just because it seems common that doesn't mean that it is natural it can be normalized by being but it's not natural you understand so y'all going to have to start thinking about that the only reason why we are going downhill many reasons why we're going downhill it's because we're sitting back saying, I don't care. I just want my money. And a lot of people who are manipulating you, the reason why you're going downhill is because they're getting their money and you're not. So to put you down there in the ditch makes them rich. Put you down there in the ditch makes them rich. And the only reason why that happens is because you're trying to live outside of your means. You got to be, you got to bring yourself down to a modest level and be cool with things. You don't have to, it's, you don't. Because the investment should be in your soul, the, the core of what we are dealing with today. Stop telling your kids, oh, you need to do this and be this to be somebody. No, teach them life. Teach them how to appreciate themselves. Teach them how to be content with what they have. You don't always have to have something new. Fix what you got. And the problem is America is not new. America needs to be fixed. We're trying to create a new America. You can't do that. You have to learn how to appreciate what you already have. And because we're not appreciating it, we are losing it to all these unnecessary systems trying to fix it. You no, know, trying to make it new instead of trying to fix it with the proper tools, which is being properly educed. Meaning, for some of you who don't understand, educated. Are being properly properly focused on within the inner self of the person stop worrying about what they can produce stop worrying about what's within their selves that's his audio log and maybe that should answer your question this is leon c and that is for you